Don't let me drown What's going on you lot? It's been a hot minute since I filmed a video. This is a story I've wanted to tell for... It's hot. July, August, September, October. Six months. This happened six months ago, you guys. The story begins with me being discharged from a um, mental health unit. Let me do some pretext. I used to live in Lancashire, Preston to be exact. I dated someone who was into cocaine and that was where I got introduced to it. I got hired for the first time with my, my ex-boyfriend. That's actually the last guy I dated. Kind of only good for girls now. But my sexuality is a whole other story. I already know the person this is about is going to be watching this. When I was in Lancashire, I got very into using cocaine. Not the best move I've ever made, not the worst move I've ever made, but certainly not the best. And cocaine has this certain old kick to it, um, especially when you mix it with psychiatric medication, which I did. Very quickly, the first time I did it, I was out of control. It is, and probably always will be, the most addictive thing I've ever done in my life. For me, alcohol was a lot easier to give up than the cocaine. Time passed. Like, it just passed so quickly and it made life, which is why for me it made it so hard to um, just made life livable. But the reason for that wasn't because of the drug, it was because time was moving so fast that I didn't have time to think about my life. I stopped using it the day I stopped hanging out with a group of alcoholics and I say that as a matter of fact, not as name calling. I'm sorry if you got pie into a point where you black out every night. That's a problem. I just wish these people would realise that and go and get the help they need. With my ex, I never really let me have any. He wouldn't give me a lot. And then we split up. But then I was like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? And I started just flirting my way around the club. And I will say this categorically, I have never paid for a single ounce, gram, milligram, whatever you want to call it, of cocaine. I don't want to go back to that life. But yes, I still struggle with urges and yes, it's fucking horrible. I feel like I've like proper sidetracked from the subject. I, mean, I am finally now in a place where I'm not around them people. Moving on to June, I moved into a flat with someone who I met through Twitter. I will not be saying the name for their own protection and privacy as well as my own. That I don't wish harm upon anyone. I've got to say this, when I left hospital, I was very vulnerable. I wasn't prepared for it. Right, I wasn't ready for it. I moved from Wembley further into central London. It was very unsettling because I'd never lived in like, a flat share like that before. You know, me and the person I was living with, we got close and this specific person then disclosed, hey, I deal drugs for such and such. Do you know anyone who would be interested? I hate what I said next. I literally said, I'm a student, what do you think? And then this is where I was then invited to sell drugs to them. I tell you how much I was willing to pay me for what I sold. A fiver. A fucking fiver is what they was going to pay me to deal a class A substance. Of which if you are caught with, you're going to jail. What do we call it over here? Prison? No. I am not going to provide a service for someone that's going to kill them. I haven't even got to the core of the story yet. That went away for a while. Then, I, I, this who I was living with was going to these meetings and this Bulgarian like came over, put his two phones down on the table, sat there. The person I was living with made claims of working with this particular person from Bulgaria. And now this is where people are going to think I'm fucking psychotic or manic or whatever. I can literally show messages of this. I was living with someone who was not only dealing drugs, this person also had people coming around smoking crack. This person also laundered money across the years. And they said, oh, well, that's what they claim. And then there was one night where I was terrified. This person I was living with turned around and said, one of our guys got hit. I already knew what he was going to say, but I asked anyway, what do you mean? He was taken out and now we're planning to strike back. And at that point, I really, really felt in danger. I put in a police report. The next morning, me and the person I was living with kind of got into an argument. I want you to move out. Um, I phoned my mom. I was crying and I was trying to explain the whole situation to her. She thought I was 
absolutely insane honestly i actually got my friend aaron i got one of my friends to phone the police for me because i didn't want to risk being overheard on the phone about it police came and they did a welfare check they was like oh this bitch doesn't know how to do basically and i moved out within a week within five days i moved from that central london that's telford and to those of you who don't know what that is it's about four hours there four hours back it took two trips to get all my stuff i ended up moving in with someone who i didn't know i got put in a situation that was so far beyond what I would believe. Whenever I spoke about this with people, I was like, there's no way in hell that's true. And then I sent them screenshots and messages. And they're like, I oh, fuck, she won't get in. Because when I was living there, I was having issues sleeping. And I asked this person, hey, can you get me some Xanax? In the UK, you can get it on private prescription. You can't get Xanax on the NHS. So I asked this person to get Xanax for me. Okay, I'll see what I can do. No, I actually got that. I met this person when I was in hospital. They turned my life upside down. Very literally. And just hearing I, I just key and thing in my I'm just like what, what if that had gone wrong what if the person who came to the flat didn't know I was there and saw me and fucking killed me it was a genuine fear for my life and I've had people for months and then trying to dispute what I say and trying to say this trying to say that and I can prove everything I've said whether or not the person I lived with was actually doing what they claim whether they was a part of this mafia group or whatever which I have a hard time believing I moved in with a drug dealer like, it's, it's just thing that confuses me a lot this story is I feel like I've dragged it out and I feel like people are gonna be like she's just dragging it out and just blah 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 kind of all I've had all year so yeah that's fun the person I was living with though I can't even put into words how I feel towards them a lot of you guys know I am very good at controlling my anger I have my moments who doesn't this is the one person who I thought was saving me literal hell because of the building I used to live in which is in Wembley was getting shut down and basically I had nowhere to go but my, my mum's and as you guys know if you follow me on Twitter we don't get on and then this person from Twitter comes to me like oh I'll come visit you in hospital I was like oh well, thank you like, that means a lot and they came to the hospital to visit me and that was enough and then we got to know each other a bit and they said they had a room spare and I said well I need a place stay if you if you if you need a tenant and I moved in. I will point out that I did pay five hundred pound up front for this person. What's hard for me with this is one not only did I get treated horribly in the end of it and have all my stuff posted all over the internet like what I spent my money on like pictures of receipts them going through my old phone and then trying to put a sim card in my phone but when I wasn't there a phone of mine they stole from me and then deep putting it behind the unit and then for some strange reason you give me a hand moving the, the unit back and then oh hey presto there's the phone like the way this person treated me was wrong I'm literally sharing this because don't make the same mistakes I've made like the Seriously, like I put myself in a very dangerous situation. I moved in with someone who, for all I know, could have killed me. I don't know how you're supposed to react <laughs> when someone's here who is, oh hey, there's someone who worked for the Bulgarian Mafia coming round. But I want to say this because it's credit due. This in question did come to hospital and support me for my mental health. However, this person then also went onto social media slandering me saying that I was exaggerating my mental health, overdosing and making everything up. While I was living in that person's flat, one overdose by about two milligrams so I could sleep. I don't know what was going on. That was true in July. July was one of the worst months of this year. Once I moved out, I put in another police report naming people, putting phone numbers down, putting their contact details down, putting their license plate down because I'm not known to get caught up in someone's illegal activities. I don't for two seconds believe that this person works for the Mafia. I just have to put that clear, make that clear. Like I'm not losing my shit I swear. But they do the cocaine. They help people get cocaine. The last time I used cocaine was with that person. I actually have a photo of me from that night and it's not what you're going to expect. It made me miserable because I just fucked up a year of being sober and all it took was do you want to do a line? Addiction is powerful and strong and the urges don't go away. It's not a really dramatic story, like there is part of the story that is quite dramatic but that, that's a whole video and it involves Judge Rinder. That one, we'll, we'll do it on the next time. We'll do it next time. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Peace. I missed the camera. That's how tired I am. Wow.